The Minecraft Legends trailer recently dropped and honestly it looks really cool. However, there are quite a few details that I noticed that I think are worth pointing out and exploring further. So those details and theories are what we're exploring today. Let's do it. In attempt Minecraft's real lore, much like how Minecraft Dungeons expands on the lore of the Illagers, I think Minecraft Legends is planning on expanding on the Piglin and the Nether lore, but also helping to provide us an explanation as to the rest of the lore in the base game and what it may be. I'll go over some specific points later in this video, however a question I had when watching the trailer was why are the piglins invading? Don't they turn into zombies after like 30 seconds of being exposed to the overworld? And while this is a different overworld with new biomes and structures and rules, I think that there could be some lore explanations already working out in our favor. MatBat once theorized that there was an airborne zombie virus that was poisoning the overworld that things living in the overworld eventually developed an immunity to, unless otherwise compromised by lightning or a zombie bite, and that's why the nether mobs turned into zombies after exiting a portal. However, However, I propose a theory that the army we recruit in this game actually is what releases the toxin. As an effort to prevent the piglins from invading again, either as a last ditch attempt, after they win, or maybe it was their plan all along. A toxin that only affects piglins, or that, like we thought, something we do develop an immunity to. In at 9, the Minecraft Nations. At a minute and 33 seconds into the trailer, the book of the villagers reading actually flips past a page that has three symbols on it. I believe that these will be the nations or the groups that we will have to recruit in the Legends story mode. The one on the far right seems to be in LA, with the crown on its head, I'm guessing it's the LA King. The middle one seems to be the Skeleton King with a very weird crown, and the far left seems to be a zombie with what looks like either an empty head or a small brain. Either way, given the context, I'm guessing that they're the king or at least the the leader of the zombie faction, or clan, or whatever you want to call it. This could also be a reference to the secret paintings added in 1.19, that seem to be similar to the nations from Avatar The Last Airbender, fire, earth, water, and air. But these are unused, hinting to me that they're unfinished, since with these kings in Legends, they could be representing air, water, and earth. Fire could either be us humans, or the piglins that are invading, but since they don't want to give that away just yet, they put in placeholders for us to speculate about, but I think that this is a pretty solid explanation. In an 8 color delay, we see a couple of different colors of LA in the trailer from Minecraft Legends. A blue one, the normal one, and a gold one. At first, I thought that the golden one was the LA King I mentioned in the last number, but after seeing multiple, I'm not so sure that's the case. That seems like a lot. The possibility of color delay has been in the base game since 1.19 was released. It's been something people were talking about, but it's not true. But what do these do in Legends? Well, I think that they're actually going to serve multiple purposes. The blue LA are like the ones from normal Minecraft. They grab items, but instead of bringing them to a chest, they bring them to you. I'm sure it's just a game mechanic meant to stop you from spending ages trying to pick up items, or maybe it's a lore reason as to why they all come to you. And the gold or yellow LA are seemingly the builders. They help build what I guess is a house in this trailer, so the different LA, if there are more than these two as well, will probably do additional things. Which is why the yellow LA don't show up in Minecraft, although it is possible that they will be added in the future. I mean, like we have the place command now that lets you place structures so maybe in a future creative update we will see something like this and it's possible that to have a yellow LA build these structures for us if we end up giving them the proper blocks for it which will be extremely cool and extremely interesting and it's seven ancient beacon there is a structure we see in the beginning of the trailer that has the same pattern appear multiple times throughout this video. Once in the book that the villager is reading at the beginning, and then in the golden structure in the village, the structure that looks like a portal that the LA fly through, and then it can be seen in the gameplay actually spinning around. My guess is that this is probably an ancient form of beacon, before the discovery of the nether and the soul sand that eventually creates the wither. Hell, honestly, even in the main game there are no naturally generated beacons. So my thinking is that this is their first attempt at gaining buffs or the like. It could be that these structures are even what keep the peace and prevent the monsters from turning hostile for whatever reason. If it was just a structure, I'd assume that they were trying to make a beacon, but it actually turning and spinning around is what makes me think that they actually must be doing something. But that's, that's what they're doing, I'm unsure about for now. Or maybe these are the receptacles that actually release the toxin that turns the piglins into zombies. And it's six golems. Looking at the poster for this game since 
since there was really isn't anything else for this game, we can see designed creepers, meaning that creepers will be in this game. However, it's also interesting to see that there are a load of other creatures that aren't in the base Minecraft game. We see what I can only assume are sentient prototype wooden dispensers that look like Qbert with a head full of arrows, a golden allay like I mentioned earlier, but also three different types of golem. A seemingly carved stone golem, four of those at least, a mossy cobblestone golem above those, and some odd blue golems next to the creepers. Now I'm not exactly sure what these could be, however I'm guessing that they're either diamond golems, but that seems kind of ridiculous, or possibly skulk golems, since they do have a similar appearance to the warden's design, and they seem to be made with deep slate as well. Whether these were created by humans or if they just joined the fight on their own is up for debate, but I think that those are skulk golems and that they're exclusive to this game. Maybe they're in dungeons? I don't know, I don't I haven't played dungeons. Halfway through into number five, falling out. In the beginning of this trailer, I think the strangest thing we see is actually that there are zombie baby villagers playing in the village next to normal villagers without actually killing them, which is absolutely insane. Like, what? No way that's a thing. Well, believe it or not, it, it is. It, it's right there, right in the beginning. How could this be possible? Is it possible that maybe the zombies and villagers had a falling out later on that causes them to become enemies? Or maybe in our lore, the nether war ends up turning the zombies to their side since they don't have to wear stupid hats in the nether. So instead, the zombies join their team. I don't know, but it's certainly interesting to see that while we think we have to unite all these warring factions, they don't seem to be at odds at all. And in fact, they never were. More on that later. Or could it be that the toxin that they released to keep the piglins at bay after the war also turns the mobs hostile? In a four, ruined portals. One mystery I've been thinking about recently is the nether portals from the main game of Minecraft. Where did they come from? Why is there nether leaking out of them, and why are they ruined? My first thought was the Shadow of Israfel, since those portals had a similar sort of style. They were scattered around, destroyed, leaking nether, but that doesn't fit into the normal Minecraft lore. However, in the trailer for Legends, this could be an explanation. The nether starts leaking out of these portals that start popping up everywhere, so that explains the netherrack around these portals now. And it also explains why the portals came around but because they were generated from the other side. They were ruined because we had to sever the connection, and the tools were left nearby in case they ever ended up invading again. This game seems to be trying to explain the piglin and nether lore more, which I am certainly looking forward to. Getting close to the end in number three, Minecraft Multiverse. While seemingly Hermitcraft is introducing the Minecraft Multiverse with Rian's Grift, the greater Minecraft Multiverse may be starting thanks to Minecraft Legends. Quote from the Minecraft Legends article on Minecraft.net, Stories are powerful. Legends teach us about what is past and what might have been. They have created a bridge between us and generations long past as well as the ones to come. We want to tell you another story about a peaceful coexistence where adventurers did not get chills when hearing hissing, groans, or the clatter of bones. And this is backed by the fact that, like I said in the beginning of the trailer, there are zombie villagers playing next to normal villagers. And while this could have developed later on, the website specifically says where adventurers did not, as in never did, even before the piglins invaded. So could this be a universe where we're in essence always on peaceful mode, but that monsters can also spawn because they aren't hostile? Or is the war a splitting point between what we see in this game and what we experience in normal Minecraft? And ultimately, in a number two, inspired by Fallen Kingdom. See, the first thing I noticed was the piglin invasion reminded me of a very old series of Minecraft music videos, a, a saga if you will, by the one and only Captain Sparkles, aka Jordan Moran. Starting with Fallen Kingdom, which didn't feature anything nether related, but the follow up, Take Back the Night, very much did. In fact, it had so much impact that it pushed the rest of the story. The other two music videos, Find the Pieces and Dragonhearted, heavily focused on the war between the overworld and the piglins, who at the time were the zombie pigmen, but they still kinda had the ears of the piglins which is where many assume the idea for the ears came from. In Take Back the Night, in fact, the main character is the chosen hero of legend, which is interestingly enough the story of Minecraft Legends. The big bad of the piglins was in fact a big brutish one wearing armor, which at first was made from wither skeleton parts, but then was upgraded. The series even features taking the fight to the piglins like they suggest you do in this game's description. I don't know, but I feel like if we're not going to get an aw man achievement, this is a pretty good second. And finally, in a number one, Herobrine is in the 
the game. Especially if it's inspired by the Fallen Kingdom saga, it seems to me like Herobrine could very possibly be present in this game. They've made it clear that this is a different overworld, not one that we play around with in normal Minecraft, which means to me that they're doing something kind of daring. The issue of adding Herobrine, however, would be copyright with the character, since the character, while being based on Minecraft, was indeed created by a fan. So there would have to be some kind of agreement to get him in the game for real, but with the piglins popping out of the portal with glowing white eyes, it set off a trigger in my brain. I mean, yes, their texture in game does show their eyes as a white pixel, but glowing white eyes is still synonymous with Herobrine, especially when the big guy squints and it looks like there are two pixels for his eyes, okay? That sent me spinning. Oh, and also if this is taking inspiration from Fallen Kingdom, Herobrine makes an appearance in the first, second, and third videos of the series. I don't know if he was in the fourth, but if they are taking inspiration from it, it could be that they take an antagonist as well. Or maybe just have a temple that hints at his existence. That's all the time we have for today, friends. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been in Shower Man, Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video.